What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panyuta for tutorials.eu. In this video, I would like to talk about money, about salaries as a developer to be more precise. And we're going to look at three different countries. So we're going to look at the US, Germany and India, because those are the countries my subscribers come mainly from. And then we're going to look at C Sharp developers, Unity developers and Android developers, which are the developers that we have as subscribers as well. And these are also the topics that we cover on this channel, mainly as of now, which might change in the future. But for now, that's what we're going to focus on. All right, let's get started. Talking about developer salaries, we have to look at different kind of aspects. So of course, the location is going to be important, but then also the experience that you have, and then even more potentially what it is that you are developing. So in which programming language have you specialized in? Or in general, what is it that you specifically focus on and became really good at? For example, you will make more money as an ASP.NET developer in C Sharp than, for example, as a Unity developer on average. And these numbers are always averages because they will highly differ depending on the company that you're working for, depending on your skills in terms of negotiations. So how well can you negotiate, for example? And then, of course, it also depends on what kind of other bonuses and other additional salary aspects do you get? So for example, is it just the salary that you're getting or do you get a bonus, a short-term incentive, so to speak? So which would be just a bonus based on your success or based on the success of the company? Or is it even LTI, so long-term incentives such as stocks or stock options? So there is a difference between those two as well. And this is usually not something done in many countries. So where you get options, this is something that you get in Silicon Valley quite a bit. And it's really insane in terms of what kind of a difference it can make. Okay, before I will talk about the numbers in the different countries, I would like to explain those concepts a little more. I have worked for a company that creates software for specifically bonus and payment systems. So I know a thing or two about that. So. LTI is where it becomes really interesting because let's say the salary, for example, in the Silicon Valley, it can go all the way up to crazy numbers. Let's say with 10 years of experience, you could get half a million in terms of your salary. And then let's say you would get a hundred thousand as a additional success bonus and then a stock option. So the stock option, how that would work is you have the option to buy a stock for a particular value. Let's say the Facebook stock is worth $100 and you are allowed to purchase a thousand of those stocks for a price of just $80. So you actually gain money just by buying the stocks. But then of course the company can grow in terms of the stock price and then the options that you have there, they're sitting there and waiting for you to vest them. Basically they're waiting there for you to buy those options and they for example, let's say they grow to 200 in three years and then you can still buy them for those $80 that you have the options for. But then there is also the stock directly, not stock options, but actual stocks that you get. And then there is a vesting period. So basically a time that needs to pass before you may vest, may earn the stocks when you actually get the stocks. Let's say you have a contract over four years for the long-term incentive and that means Let's say you get another thousand Facebook stocks, so, so to speak, then you would, for example, get access to the first 25% of them after one year, you could vest them, and then you could get another 25% in the second year and so forth. This is super interesting and cool, but that is mainly something that you would either get in startups in all countries around the world, I would assume, or really specifically in the Silicon Valley where that is a common practice, but it is not highly common in, for example, Germany and most companies. There you would just get a salary and then a bonus, a little bonus like 10 or 15% on top of your base salary that you would get as a bonus. Okay, now let's look at actual numbers a little bit. So I talked about these insane numbers that you would get uh, as, a, as a very experienced uh, tech lead, for example, in Facebook or Google, that you would get half a million, for example, right? These are insane numbers, unimaginable. Of course, a, f a half a million is not the same if you live in the Silicon Valley in comparison to, let's say, somewhere in Texas or whatever. And that is something you have to definitely take into consideration. Quick pause. This video is sponsored by 
our own website and especially by our learning paths. So if you want to become a developer, definitely check out our learning paths page where you can start either with a free tutorial or you can check out our paid courses, which are complete courses, which will first bring you to an advanced level and then to a pro level, depending on which course you're taking and at which point in your career you are. So definitely check those out, tutorials.eu slash learning minus paths and get our courses highly discounted. You can find the link in the description below. Now, before we look at the numbers, there's one important thing or interesting thing. On average, a person's salary doubles their starting salary by the time they cross the 10 years experience mark. Okay, so whatever you're earning at the beginning, 10 years later, you're going to get a lot more. So twice as much on average. All right. So when it comes to salaries, there is this salary explorer page. And on this website, you can check out the salaries for certain locations, certain countries, even specific cities, depending on how much information is available on that page. So for some countries and states, there is more information for others, there's less. So you can definitely check that out and find out what would be the average numbers for the country that you live in. But then you also might want to take one thing into consideration, and that is the cost of living. So if you go to numbio.com, you can just select a city. For example, in my case, it would be Cologne, Germany. So you can see here, a family of four estimated monthly costs are 3,000 without rent. And then rent for a family of four is another 1,500 to 2,000, depending on where you want to live, or even 3,500 in some cases, if you want to live in a nice house at the edge of the city in a nice area. So this is something you need to take into consideration. You can even compare cities here if you wanted to. Let's compare that with Bangalore here. Bangalore, India. So here you can see family of four estimated monthly cost is a third of what it is in Germany or in Cologne specifically. But even here, let's look at daily and you will see, well, very similar. <laughs> but you can also see that it compares it to another city that I looked at just a minute earlier. So it's less expensive than rent is on average, even cheaper in comparison than in Cologne. Let's look at San Francisco here, which is not exactly in the Silicon Valley, but it's still interesting to see. So here you see an average cost of 3,700 euros and you could see how much a certain thing would cost and the range in which a th certain thing is. So meal inexpensive restaurant is between 12 and $30 there. And on average it would be something around $20. Okay, so that's definitely something you might want to take into consideration. All right, now let's look at the salaries for C-sharp developers, for example, in the US. So on average, we're talking about 100,000 US dollars. The lowest, well, the range is between 54,000 and 151,000 US dollars. In Germany, you are talking about $56,000 as an average, and it's between 25 and a half thousand or almost 26,000 US dollars and almost 90,000 US dollars. So that's the range. You see the range is huge there. So you can get a lot more depending on where you are working in Germany. So in Eastern Germany, you would usually get less money for the same job than you would get, for example, in Stuttgart, where companies like, such as Bosch, Porsche, and well, yeah, all the different kinds of big comp German companies are sitting. Even Siemens, I believe, is there. So, all the so a bunch of the big German companies are sitting in the south. So, either in so either near Munich or near Stuttgart. Then let's look at India. So, in India, the average is around five thousand three hundred dollars a year, and it starts at two thousand five hundred fifty-six and goes all the way up to eight thousand four hundred US dollars. Now let's look at Android developers. So here in the US, we're talking about 91,900 US dollars on average, which is already quite a big difference. So you can see it's already 8% lower than the C Sharp developer. So on average, an Android developer would get a little less money than a C Sharp developer, at least in the US. The salaries range between 44,000 and 144,000 US dollars. Then in Germany, as an Android developer, on average, you're earning 53,000 US dollars, and that is between 24,000 and 84,000 a year. Then in India, on the other hand, it's 4,900 US dollars roughly, and 
that's the average. And then that's between $2,496 or $2,500 roughly and $7,500 US dollars. Now, Unity developers, you can see they get the least money, but I'm going to talk about money a little more in a second. So here we're talking about 86,200 as an average and 44,000 as the lower range and 132 as the higher range. Of course, there are people who get more than that and there are people who get less than that. So that counts for all the numbers that I'm talking about here. And you can always check out Salary Explorer to get more info on that. So in Germany, we're talking about 37,800 on average as a Unity developer. That translates into 46,000 US dollars and the lowest value would be 21,000 and the highest around 73,000 US dollars. Now in India, we're talking about 4,550 US dollars roughly a year as a Unity developer. And the range is between 2,360 and almost 7,000 US dollars. So that by itself isn't saying much, right? Because money is good and all and it's important and you need to have a certain amount of money to get by and as soon as you have a family you need more money significantly more money i can tell you I have two children and a wife and it gets significantly more expensive everything gets more complicated but at the same time it's also fulfilling right so you just have to find something that you really enjoy but that at least pays your needed money that you actually need for your living in my opinion and then you should always have a little more and you should put that aside I would recommend something around 20% of your income. The thing is, it's so hard to do that because whenever you get money, you feel like you need to spend it because you just need it for your living and so forth. But then what you can do is even if you cannot afford to save any money, you are very likely to get more money in the future. So once you get more money, I would just recommend to take the increase in income that you have there and put that aside. And if you don't feel confident about not growing your lifestyle at all what you can do is you could just say okay i'm going to grow my income only by 50 percent of my increase of my sal well, of my salary increase so to speak so let's say you're making two thousand a month and now suddenly you're making three thousand a month okay that's a huge increase not very likely but can happen right depending on where you're working and what kind of growth you're going through and then let's say you were spending two thousand a month on average on your lifestyle so now that you have 3,000 available, don't change your lifestyle to suddenly spend 3,000, but instead just spend 2,500. So increase your lifestyle. Let's get a new flat. Let's get a car. In, uh, well, instead of driving a bicycle or whatever, but don't exceed this 2,500, for example. And the rest, so the other 500, you start saving and you can put them into an ETF or you can save them in order to buy an apartment or you can save them in order to, well, first of all, build up a security savings account, so to speak, because you should always have at least three, if not six to 12 months of your living cost saved on the side. Okay, so in case you, let's say you need 2000 for your living, you should save at least 6,000. You should have them available on your bank account at any moment in case something happens, in case you get sick, in case you lose your job, in case whatever happens. So at least three months, because three months will give you at least a little bit of time to find a new job. Best is if it's six months or even 12 months. So if you need 2,000 a month for your living, then save 20K, 24K, have them on the side, don't use them for a car, getting a new car, for getting a new PC, getting whatever. This is really purely there for exactly this situation where you're losing your job, where you get sick, where whatever happens. It, of course, depends on which country you're living in. For example, in Germany, you are pretty safe. If something happens, if you were to lose your job, you still get 70% of your salary for at least a year and stuff like that, or 66%, something around that range. So you're not going to be screwed entirely but that's not the case in every country in the world. So definitely take that into consideration. And then another really important one is, depending on where you live, there is a certain threshold above which you will not be happier with an increase of income. So let's say in Germany, that's I think around 60,000 US dollars or 50,000 euros roughly. So once you earn more than that, you're not going to get more happy just because you make more money. That means that now that you make, let's say, 60 or 70,000 euros instead of 50,000 euros, this additional money, while it will 
make you feel good at the moment when you get this increase in salary, but it will not make you happier on a deeper level. And that is something that you really need to consider when selecting your job, because you need to find a job that makes you happy in terms of the tasks that you're doing, because otherwise you will not be happy with your life because a job is basically a big portion of your life. It's half of your waking hours, right? So you're awake for 16 hours and half of it you're working, potentially even longer if you have to travel. So you have to find a way that this time is going to be enjoyable. And this can become enjoyable through, on one hand, the things that you're doing, on the other hand, where you are doing them. So what company are you doing them for? What is the purpose that you are following with the company? Then what kind of colleagues do you have? Do you love your colleagues? Do you despise your colleagues? These are things that are going to impact your happiness. And a bigger salary for the cost of having shitty colleagues and having a shitty location where you have to work for or a company that you cannot stand behind because they do something that you just don't like, whatever it is, maybe they make weapons and you are a pacifist, then that's not a good idea, right? So don't start there, even if they pay you twice as much. So these are things that you have to take into consideration when selecting a job. And at least that's my opinion. I mean, do whatever you want. <laughs> in the end, it's all up to you. I personally, I uh, was in jobs for three years. I was employed. And then I started my own thing, making video courses, teaching people how to program. And at first I just did it, right? I just created courses and it was cool. And then I, then I made it a couple of extra bucks. And then I quit my job to do it full time. And then I realized, hey, this is really cool. And then I realized, wow, I have a purpose now. So purpose is something that is really important. For me, the purpose is to teach as many people as possible how to program because I believe I can change people's lives doing that. And that is really motivating me so much to make this content and to now talk, I don't know, like for 10 minutes about, uh, about how to find the right job and how to save money. Because the thing is, I don't do that just for, for making money. Of course, I want to make money. That's how it is, right? But I want to help. I want to share my understanding and knowledge, which I acquired through reading a lot of books, through listening to a lot of audiobooks, and constantly educating myself about finances, about personal health, about mental health and all the, those kind of things. That's why I'm very happy to share this stuff. If you want to know more about this stuff and want to get more insight on non-programming specific topics, feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know. Uh, I'm sorry for uh, uh, talking about all kinds of stuff now, but I'd say, yeah, let's make a break here. See you in another video, hopefully. And check out one of my paid courses because that's how I actually can make my living. <laughs> Yeah, you can find the link in the description. And if you don't, man, it's totally fine because I'm super happy if you just watch my YouTube content and if you just leave a comment every now and then, leave a like while you're at it, subscribe to the channel and just, just learn from me. That makes me happy. Teaching people how to become happier with, well, by learning to program because I believe programming is amazing. It's really cool. It's just so good. And it can help you to make more money, which this video is about. But at the same time, it can allow you to build your own things and build them your own way. Being an engineer is just amazing. All right. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.